Welcome back to the 10th episode in creating a third person controller. Congratulations if you've made it this far. If this is the first episode you're seeing, we're creating an entire third person controller from scratch. Today, we're going to be looking at finally creating our states and getting our character up and running with a state machine. But first, if you're enjoying this, hit the like button and subscribe. Want the whole course right now? Become a channel member or join my Patreon for instant access to every episode. If you'd rather own it forever, grab the course on Udemy, links below. Let's get started in creating the individual states that actually control the character. So we can come back into idle and we can say that instead of extending state, that it extends motion. And so now we'll have access to all of those different functions. And so now we have access to all of these different functions and so that we can uh, set the direction and then check it if it's changed and then move into the run state, right? All we need to do is actually just create an update function. So we just type update and it takes delta, which is a float and returns void, right? And I'll just type pass there. And what you'll see is this little blue arrow. And that means that it's overriding a class function. So this is a virtual function. Um, and so obviously it's being called, obviously this doesn't do anything, but in idle, we're gonna do something with it, right? And so realistically, we just need to call set direction. Uh, we are going to calculate velocity because we do want deceleration. Um, and so we'll just pass in speed and the direction will be the um, direction, which is generated by set direction and delta is delta, right? And that's really all there is to it. And so what we wanna do here is set up when we will transition to run, right? So we can say if direction is not equal to vector three dot zero, which means we're, we're giving some kind of input. So we should finished dot emit, and we want to go to the run state, right? Because that's when we want to start moving. So that's going to be exactly the same as the name of the uh, node here, which is capital R-U-N. Now, case does matter. It needs to match exactly the name. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. And that's literally it for the idle state. It's just going to be updating the direction, calculating the velocity. This is the deceleration. So when you come back into this um, state from after you've moved, and if input starts, then we're going to go to run, right? And it's the same thing here. We can set up motion, it extends motion. We don't really need to do much right now. We're still building it up. So we create a function update, an update function here. We're gonna create that and delta and float and it returns void, right? Uh, and the same thing, we really just wanna be setting the direction and calculating the velocity. And it's the same, speed, direction and delta, okay? But now it's the opposite. So we can say if direction is equal to vector 3.0, finished dot emit, and we want to go back to idle. Okay, so theoretically now, we should be able to move. We won't be able to jump. And technically, if the floor fell out beneath us, we wouldn't fall down either. And so for now, what I'm going to do, because we don't really know what state we're in. So for now, I'm going to create an enter uh, function, which is the virtual one. I'll just hit save on that. You want to make sure that you're getting this blue arrow to confirm that it's um, inheriting from that. And so when we enter, I want to just print the name of the, uh, the node, and that will confirm basically this state. So we've got one in run. Um, I might just copy and paste, be a bit easier. So let's copy and we'll paste that here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come back into this. And we're going to comment all this out. You can press control K if you want to do that quickly. Um, and that'll just comment out all the code. And so it's the ultimate test. We're going to set the velocity from motion and we've got the two states idle and run. So now we should see we go to run and functionally it's pretty much the same thing, but the difference uh, can be whatever you like it to be, right? So right now these could be the same state if you wanted them to be, but if you want, say for example, Jump, jump to be only possible when you're in the run state. So we can create a state input and we take event and we can make it an input event, turns void, pass there, press save. 
Once again, making sure we get that little blue arrow to make sure that we are inheriting from that function. So for state input, we can say if event dot is action pressed jump, then here we don't really need to do anything. We can just say um, finished dot emit and we go to jump. Okay, and then in the jump, well, jump is pretty similar to when you're moving, right? Like these, these states are fairly similar, but we want to have initial velocity. So in the enter function here, void, we can actually do our jump uh, code essentially. So we can perhaps create a function. We'll just type pass here called jump, which returns void. And in that we might just go velocity. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot to make sure that this extends motion rather than state. Okay, so now we can say velocity dot y is equal to jump velocity. And then in the enter function, we can call jump, right? But we do need to be making sure that, and uh, let's create this function. We are updating the velocity each frame. So we need an update function. So we go um, delta, which is a float, and it returns void. And once again, waiting for these to update. So they've got those little blue arrows. And well, we do want to get the direction and we do want to calculate gravity this time because we haven't been doing it for the last two. And we probably should, to be honest, um, that takes Delta uh, and then also calculate velocity. It's the speed, right? The direction and the Delta. Um, but we also, once we're in jump, we do need to fall and we need to get back to the idle or run state. So we can say if velocity.y is less than or equal to zero, right? Uh, so it's decreasing and it's eventually going to be going into the negative, uh, then obviously we're falling and we want to go finish.emit. And once again, it is fall, right? Okay, so what do we do in the fall state? Well, to be honest, not too much. And I'm going to get a little bit lazy here and we're going to go and just copy all this update stuff. Make sure that it extends motion. Paste that in, right? But how do we know that we're back on the floor, right? We could check owner.isOnFloor. We could probably create a function within motion to tell us that we're on the floor, right? So we can create a function called we could even call it is on floor to be honest um nothing wrong with that and it returns a bool right and all we need to do is go return owner dot is on floor okay and so now we have that exact same function we can go back to the fall and we can say if is on floor then we want to go finished dot emit and for now i'm just going to go back to idle because that will work exactly the same. And if we are giving input, then it'll travel straight back to run. So, and that, so that will work just fine. If you're making something more complicated when we start working with animations, it's gonna matter, but for now, um, we'll just do that. And now we did uh, note that we weren't actually calculating uh, gravity while we were in idle, right? So, for idle, I don't, I don't think it matters too much. We might not need to calculate that, but we do need to check. So we can go if is on floor, and I should say if not is on floor, then we need to go finished dot emit, and we go to the fall state, right? And then same with run. That's the exact same situation. We calculate movement. We're not doing any kind of movement dampening. Um, on the on the fall and jump states right now so um, it, it's not going to feel any different in theory it's going to process just the same we'll just be in a different state you know what i mean and so i'm also going to copy the font the enter for the print so that just we can see in the console that we are changing states what set up a label for that so that we can see it later on and in jump we've already got stuff in the enter so we will go and paste that in there. 
Okay, so let's give it a run. Oh, gravity is around the wrong way. That's all right. Uh, we can go back to motion and we can just invert that. <laughs> okay, we're back in idle. Run, jump, fall, idle, run. And you can see how it all goes together and we're pretty much back to square one. But now we have a state machine that's controlling everything. And once it's created, obviously you can see that the code is very simple for each of these states, but it can be much more complicated. And we can do a lot of different things with it, including controlling the animations. In the next one, we're gonna look at uh, creating some more detailed and deliberate movement mechanics that are just gonna enhance your character a little bit. All right, I'll see you there. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Next week, we're gonna be looking at creating a sprint state. If you're finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get access to every single episode of this course, you can become a channel member or join the Patreon. And if you want direct access to the course without paying a monthly fee, you can buy it on Udemy. All right, guys, I'll see you all next time.